So lecture 11 is the first part of unit four and it is microbial diseases of the skin. So the first thing we have to look at is sort of where the pathogens come from. And in a lot of cases, they are part of the normal microbiota. And so that's where we will start. And then the end of the lecture, there are a whole lot of like really infectious diseases that uh, would never be part of a healthy microbiota. So this is skin. You've seen this before. Um, we can think about having an epidermal layer up here and then the dermis down here. And we're going to think a lot about hair follicles. Hair follicles can extend um, down into the dermis and sometimes even farther. And so you can imagine um, these are open to the outside world where the hair shaft comes out. Um, it, there are definitely big enough openings for microorganisms to get in. And depending on what happens after that, you can get some kinds of infections. Um, and then deep to that is hypodermis or the cutaneous, a uh, subcutaneous fat layer. Um, and then different things deep to that. And so we can see the same thing in histology where we have um, multi-layered epidermis with growing cells here and then keratinized cells on, um, on the most superficial layer. And then um, deep to that is the dermis, which is connective tissue. And so this is thick skin that doesn't have any hair follicles, but it does have things like blood vessels, a lot of collagen, um, and a lot of empty matrix space where cells can move through it. So cells from the immune system, um, leukocytes, can make their way through this tissue to get to the epidermis if they have to. But also um, we have to be vigilant because microorganisms that make it into the dermis can move around in there if we don't stop them. And then the same thing with uh, hypodermis. Um, organisms that can eat these cells can kind of go wild uh, in the, the hypodermis. And so all of this has to be protected by, uh, by the immune system. So normally we have um, microorganisms that would live in the stratum corneum, um, the most superficial layer of the epidermis. And uh, these will vary um, from place to place in your body and um, from person to person. So you'd have different bacteria in the um, the axillary region of your body, your armpits, than you would from, say, um, I don't know, your forearms. And, and that's for reasons that have to do with how much uh, moisture there is, how much salt there is, what kinds of sweat are evaporating from the skin. Um, and from person to person, you'd see differences, but each person's microbiota, at least skin microbiota, tends to be fairly stable over time. So you wouldn't expect to have a lot of differences um, between your own microbiota this year and next year. And sp specifically, I'm talking about the skin microbiota. Um, the gut microbiota is much more complicated. So there are a few different groups of microorganisms we typically see in the skin, um, and we would these are grouped by how basically functional, um, easy to see distinctions. So um, diphthoroids are, they just have the club shape. So these are bacteria that have the club shaped cell morphology. And so that's what they're named for. Um, they look like Carinobacterium diphtheria which causes the disease diphtheria, and that's not a disease we're seeing today. But since they look like that, we call them diphtheroids. Um, staphylococci, these again, um, remind yourself if you go back to uh, cell morphology from the very first or second lecture, staphylococcus means a cell growing in a cluster of cells. So staphylo refers to cluster, and cocci refers to spherical cells. Um, and so it just turns out that the bacteria from the genus Staphylococcus all fit this description. And these are very well adapted to living in skin. So they can resist, um, well, they can grow despite high salt from sweat. Um, they can live in dry environments. They are very durable in the environment. Um, We'll see there are some, some fungi. 
I won't cover Canada again, but this is one um, I kind of forgot from the uh, the fungus lecture. So this is the only one we'll cover here. And then there are others that we just wouldn't be thinking about as much. So we start with the diphtheroids. Um, these are saprophytes. So that is, they are going to be eating dead stuff. They'll eat parts of dead cells. They're not going to be uh, particularly invasive. Um, they, yeah, we wouldn't think of them as having a lot of virulence, so people aren't typically going to have a fatal infection from a diphtheroid, um, from the skin at least. But some of these are the ones that generate the body odor uh, from apocrine sweat glands. They, they do um, some kind of energy metabolism on some of the uh, peptides released by the apocrine sweat glands, um, and that generates the body odor. Um, another one we will see is Propionobacterium acnes, and this is uh, one that often is involved in acne. So that's the first condition we'll look at, acne. So acne is what happens when a hair follicle can be blocked and uh, sebum can accumulate and bacteria can grow sort of in the follicle. Um, and ultimately there's an inflammatory response that happens in that case. So um, immune cells will detect larger than expected amounts of this propionobacterium in the hair follicle um, and start a, an inflammatory process. And so usually it's not, it's not serious, it's confined to the hair follicle, um, and if there's swelling, it's minor. Um, and it's very superficial. I think that's the main thing to, to know, is that the, the bump or the swelling you see would be in the epidermal layer. And remember that the hair follicle is um, continu continuous with the, the epidermis. So it is an extension of the epidermis. So um, that's all I'm going to say about that. And that brings us to the staphylococci. And this is confusing um, because this is both a, sorry, both a group of organisms with a certain uh, cell morphology. They're spherical and they grow in clusters and a genus that is named after that. And it just turns out that this genus um, is super common because they're really, really sturdy. So they can um, survive on um, surfaces for months, for example. And they cause a lot of human diseases, and many of them are adapted to be part of our normal microbiota. So in many situations, they are harmless, but we see them a lot. So we call them staph or staphylococci without, special, without um, specifying the genus if we are thinking about the normal microbiota and not a disease. So um, in clinical situations, if you hear staph, it means the genus Staphylococcus, uh, Staphylococcus but um, if you're thinking about microbial diversity and you look in soil and you find bacteria with this shape, you don't know what genus they're in. So um, members of the genus are gram-positive. They're all related to each other closely. I mean, they are all in the same genus. Um, and they are useful to us in many cases. They can fight against other bacteria on our skin, and we will see some examples of that. But that's one thing they do for us, is they stick to our skin and they kill other bacteria that want to be on our skin. Um, and some of them are highly virulent and some of them are not. So, for example, some Staphylococcus aureus strains are capable of infecting any tissue in the human body, and they're just kind of nightmares. Um, there are strains of Staphylococcus epidermidis that will live on the skin, and they don't really have any virulence factors, whereas some Staphylococcus aureus have lots, and some Staphylococcus epidermidis have lots of virulence factors. Um, many of the staph that are members of the human microbiota are co what we call coagulase negative. Coagulase is a big virulence factor um, that staph can have, and it converts fibrinogen to fibrin. Um, and so what it's going to do is wall off the bacteria and protect them from the immune response. Um, 
And so a lot of Staphylococcus um, aureus will be coagulase positive. And so Staph Staphylococcus epidermidis is much more common. Um, often it will be the most common abundant bacteria on the skin. Um, but also some strains of this species have a lot of virulence factors and they can do things like cause infections of catheters or they can infect um, heart valves. And um, that, is a, that is extremely serious. They make really thick biofilms on heart valves and antibiotics can't really, um, can't kill them. So that can be very serious and what and I don't know much about the treatment of those complicated um, situations, but that, that is one of the issues. Staphylococcus aureus can be more invasive, and so we hear more about that. Um, it will colonize a lot of people asymptomatically, and a small, small portion of us have it on our skin, but a lot more of us have it in our um, nasal cavities. Aureus uh, means golden in Latin, and on certain types of agar media, the colonies are golden and that's what it's named for. So we will come back to this uh, when we look at the diseases. But right now we're, we're mostly thinking about the normal microbiota. And in this case, we're seeing the normal microbiota have significant um, capacity to become pathogenic um, when we're looking at Staphylococcus. So fungi we've looked at in the past, and a lot of them are going to be confined to the um, the dead layers of the epidermis, um, and they can cause irritation of the epidermis. And so we saw things like uh, tinea um, of the foot and of the scalp and of the beard region, um, and these are the dermatophytes or the cutaneous mycosis. Um, and so one we didn't see is cause, and, and we didn't look at specific species that make up this group. The dermatophytes are just fungi that live on the skin. Um, phyte is plant, and people didn't make distinctions between plants and microorganisms back when they were naming this. So one type of dermatophyte um, is this Malassezia for fur, and it's the only one we name. So the, the other um, members of the dermatophytes we never even really named, and it's not that important. But this one is unusual in that it can interfere with um, melanocyte um, production of, of different melanins. And that can change the skin color. So it can um, lighten dark skin in patches or darken, even darken light skin in patches. I don't have much more to say about it, just be aware. Okay, and so th those are what we would think of as the normal microbiota of the skin. Sometimes um, they get out of balance and cause disease. And so that's what we're going to look at next is some of the diseases we see. And I guess this is this is one of them. Um, the, t the different tinnias are are diseases caused by the normal microbiota, but we're going to get into the bacterial diseases in the next video. So I'll see you there.